Let's take a look at finding the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x squared, no l'hopital, right? So it looks like this. You're going to take cosine x minus 1 over that x squared, and you're going to multiply by cosine x plus 1 divided by cosine x plus 1 because that's equal to 1. Now remember, it's really cosine x minus 1 within parentheses, cosine x plus 1 within parentheses. Now this looks like a minus b times a plus b, which is then a squared minus b squared, if you recall the difference of squares. So remember, that means in our case, a is cosine x and b is equal to 1. We have to understand that because then we can apply. So we get the following. Cosine squared x minus 1 for that reason. It's really 1 squared, but that's just 1. And then the bottom, we're going to have x squared times cosine x plus 1. We're doing very well so far, friends. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and watch all the way to the end. Now, what do you do with here? Well, you got to do cosine x squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. That's the basic Pythagorean identity. And then you rearrange it because you see we have cosine squared x minus 1. So you would do cosine squared x, subtract the 1 to this side, and then subtract the sine squared x to the other side. So it looks as shown. In other words, cosine squared x minus 1 is negative sine squared x. So that's going to give us the negative sine squared x in the numerator now. And in the bottom, we still have x squared cosine x plus 1. Now we can separate this. Notice that, first of all, this is a 2 and this is a 2. So you want to likely separate in that fashion. You're going to have negative sine squared x over x squared times 1 over cosine x plus 1. That's allowed. Remember, negative sine squared x is being multiplied by that implicit 1. And then this is again a 2 and again a 2. So you can use the rules of exponents. So we're going to have negative within brackets or parentheses sine x over x, quantity squared, the whole thing. Separate the negative one away on the outside of the brackets and then times 1 over cosine x plus 1. Take a look. So that means that now that the limit as x approaches 0 of that cosine x minus 1 over x squared is equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 of negative sine x over x dot quantity squared times 1 over cosine x plus 1. These two limits are equivalent, except the 1 on the right side can be found, because you can distribute the limit into the brackets and then also to the 1 over cosine x plus 1 independently. Those are rules of limits. Thank you so much for watching thus far. Please be sure to finish your super close. And if you have difficulties with math, remember it's a human science, so you just have to persist. Just practice a lot, and eventually it will be all begin to snap together, right? But you do have to practice. So you're going to have the following then. Negative limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x quantity squared. Notice the limit is on the inside. And then times limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x plus 1. Then it's going to be negative 1. Why? Because the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, you should have learned, assuming you're doing this level, that it's equal to 1. When you square it, it's, st it's still just 1, and then you multiply it by the negative from the outside. That other limit you can do through direct substitution. This is going to be 1 over cosine 0 plus 1, you see? Which is then the following. Negative 1 times 1 over cosine 0 of... Uh, cosine 0 is 1, plus 1, which is then just negative 1 half. That's the value of the limit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something from it.